The Christ myth theory also known as the Jesus myth theory, Jesus mythicism, or Jesus ahistoricity theory is, "...the view that the person known as Jesus of Nazareth had no historical existence." Alternatively, in terms given by Bart Ehrman as per his criticism of mythicism, "...the historical Jesus did not exist. Or if he did, he had virtually nothing to do with the founding of Christianity." According to mythicist, the accounts of Jesus are mostly, or completely, of a mythical nature, and if there was a historical Jesus, close to nothing can be known about him. Most Christ mythicists follow a threefold argument, they question the reliability of the Pauline epistles and the Gospels regarding the historicity of Jesus, they note the lack of information on Jesus in non-Christian sources from the 1st and early 2nd century, and they argue that early Christianity was syncretistic and mythological from the beginning, as reflected in both the Pauline epistles and the Gospels. Therefore, Christianity was not founded on the shared memories of a man, but rather a shared mytheme. The Christ myth theory is a fringe theory, supported by few tenured or emeritus specialists in biblical criticism or cognate disciplines. It deviates from the mainstream historical view, which is that while the Gospels include many legendary elements, these are religious elaborations added to the accounts of a historical Jesus who was crucified in the first century Roman province of Judea. <laughs> Jesus and the origins of Christianity The origins and rapid rise of Christianity, as well as the historical Jesus and the historicity of Jesus, are a matter of long-standing debate in theological and historical research. While Christianity may have started with an early nucleus of followers of Jesus, within a few years after the presumed death of Jesus in c. AD 33, at the time Paul started preaching, a number of Jesus movements seem to have been in existence, which propagated divergent interpretations of Jesus' teachings. A central question is how these communities developed and what their original convictions were, as a wide range of beliefs and ideas can be found in early Christianity, including adoptionism and docetism, and also Gnostic traditions which used Christian imagery, which were all deemed heretical by proto-Orthodox Christianity. Mainstream scholarship views Jesus as a real person who was subsequently deified, whereas traditional Christian theology and dogmas view Jesus as the incarnation of God, Christ on earth. Mythicists take yet another approach, presuming a widespread set of Jewish ideas on personified aspects of God, which were subsequently historicized when proto-Christianity spread among non-Jewish converts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mainstream historical view. Jesus is being studied by a number of scholarly disciplines using a variety of textual critical methods. These critical methods, and the quest for the historical Jesus, have led to a demythologization of Jesus, and the mainstream historical view is that while the Gospels include mythical or legendary elements, these are religious interpretations of the life and death of a historical Jesus who did live in first-century Roman Palestine. While scholars differ on the historicity of specific episodes described in the biblical accounts of Jesus, the baptism and the crucifixion are two events in the life of Jesus which are subject to almost universal assent. According to historian Alana Nobbs, While historical and theological debates remain about the actions and significance of this figure, his fame as a teacher, and his crucifixion under the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate, may be described as historically certain. New Testament scholar Bart D. Ehrman states that Jesus certainly existed, as virtually every competent scholar of antiquity, Christian or non-Christian, agrees and also states that the existence of Jesus and his crucifixion by the Romans is attested to by a wide range of sources including Josephus and Tacitus. While there is widespread scholarly agreement on the existence of Jesus as a historical figure, the portraits of Jesus have often differed from each other and from the image portrayed in the Gospel accounts. <laughs> Traditional and modern Christian views Traditional Christian theology and dogmas view Jesus as the incarnation of God, Christ on earth and as the Messiah, whose death was a sacrifice that procured atonement for all who believed Jesus to be the Christ. According to Christian traditions, the Gospels and the Pauline epistles are inspired writings, which tell us in a reliable way about the birth and the life of Jesus, his ministry and sayings, and his crucifixion and resurrection. According to God's plan, liberal theology, following the demythologization of Jesus, emphasizes his earthly life as an exemplary model to be followed by Christians. 
Topic: Christ myth theorists. Most mythicists, like mainstream scholarship, note that Christianity developed within Hellenistic Judaism, which was influenced by Hellenism. Early Christianity, and the accounts of Jesus are to be understood in this context. Departing from mainstream scholarship, mythicists argue that the accounts of Jesus are mostly, or completely, of a mythical nature, questioning the mainstream paradigm of a historical Jesus in the beginning of the first century who was deified. Carrier and other mythicists are critical of the conclusions and presuppositions of historicity proponents, questioning the value of consensus as a criterion for the historicity of Jesus. Some moderate authors, most notably Wells, have argued that there may have been a historical Jesus, but that this historical Jesus was fused with another Jesus tradition, namely the mythological Christ of Paul. Others, most notably the early Wells and Alvar Eligard, have argued that Paul's Jesus may have lived far earlier, in a dimly remembered remote past. The most radical mythicist hold, in terms given by Price, the Jesus atheism viewpoint, that is, there never was a historical Jesus, only a mythological character, and the mytheme of his incarnation, death, and exaltation. This character developed out of a syncretistic fusion of Jewish, Hellenistic and Middle Eastern religious thought, was put forward by Paul, and historicized in the Gospels, which are also syncretistic. Notable atheists are Paul Louis Cushad, Earl Doherty, Thomas L. Brody, and Richard Carrier. Some other authors argue for the Jesus agnosticism viewpoint. That is, we cannot conclude if there was a historical Jesus. And if there was a historical Jesus, close to nothing can be known about him. Notable agnosticists are Robert Price, Thomas L. Thompson, and Raphael Letaster, while proponents like Earl Doherty, Price, and Carrier are concerned with the origins of Christianity and the genesis of the Christ figure. The perception of and debate about the Christ myth theory has increasingly turned to the simpler question whether Jesus existed or not, and consequently, with some scholars proposing a more moderate position. Topic: <laughs> Arguments. According to New Testament scholar Robert Van Voorst, most Christ mythicists follow a threefold argument. They question the reliability of the Pauline epistles and the Gospels regarding the historicity of Jesus. They note the lack of information on Jesus in non-Christian sources from the 1st and early 2nd century, and they argue that early Christianity was syncretistic and mythological from the beginning. Topic: Overview of main arguments. Most Christ mythicists argue that the evidence for the existence of a historical Jesus Christ is weak at best, pointing at a series of perceived peculiarities in the sources which they regard as untrustworthy for a historical account. Early Christian and other sources lack biographical information on Jesus, the so-called argument from silence. Instead, the Christ of Paul and the Jesus of the Gospels are of a mythical and allegorical nature. They further argue that the Gospels are a composite of various strands of thought, relying on Jewish writings, and note the similarities of early Christianity and the Christ figure with the mystery religions of the Greco-Roman world. Paul's Jesus is a celestial being, not a historical person, or may have lived in a dim past. The Pauline epistles are older than the Gospels but, aside from a few passages which may have been interpolations, make no reference to a historical Jesus who lived in the flesh on earth, nor do they cite any sayings from Jesus. There is a complete absence of any detailed biographical information such as might be expected if Jesus had been a contemporary of Paul, instead, Paul refers to Jesus as an exalted being. Therefore, Paul is probably writing about either a mythical entity, a celestial deity, a savior figure patterned after similar figures within ancient mystery religions, named Jesus, or a historical person who may have lived in a dim past, long before the beginnings of the Common Era. The Gospels are not historical records, although the Gospels seem to present an historical framework, they are not historical records, but theological writings, which are based on a variety of sources and influences, including Old Testament writings, Greek Stoic philosophy and the exegetical methods of Philo. The genre of the Gospels are myth or legendary fiction which have imposed a fictitious historical narrative on a mythical cosmic savior figure. By weaving together various pseudo-historical Jesus traditions, most notably the supernatural personage of Paul's epistles and ideas very important in the Jewish wisdom literature. No independent eyewitness accounts, no independent eyewitness accounts survive, in spite of the fact that many authors were writing at that time. 
Early 2nd century Roman accounts contain very little evidence and may depend on Christian sources. Diversity in early Christianity, and parallels with other religions, early Christianity was widely diverse and syncretistic, sharing common philosophical and religious ideas with other religions of the time. Its origins cannot be traced to a single founding group, but must have been rooted in a wider religious movement. It arose in the Greco-Roman world of the 1st and 2nd century AD, synthesizing Greek and Jewish philosophy of the Second Temple period. Parallels with other religions include the ideas of personified aspects of God, proto-Gnostic ideas, and salvation figures featured in mystery religions, which were often but not always, a dying and rising God. The Pauline epistles Dating Mainstream view the seven undisputed Pauline epistles considered by scholarly consensus to be genuine epistles are generally dated to AD 50 to 60 IE approximately 20 to 30 years after the generally accepted time period for the death of Jesus around AD 30 to 36 and are the earliest surviving Christian texts that may include information about Jesus topic <laughs> mythicist views some mythicists have questioned the early dating of the epistles, raising the possibility that they represent a later, more developed strand of early Christian thought. Theologian Willem Christian van Manen of the Dutch School of Radical Criticism noted various anachronisms in the Pauline epistles. Van Manen claimed that they could not have been written in their final form earlier than the 2nd century. He also noted that the Marcionite school was the first to publish the epistles, and that Marcion c. 85 c. 160 used them as justification for his Gnostic and Docetic views that Jesus' incarnation was not in a physical body. Van Manen also studied Marcion's version of Galatians in contrast to the canonical version, and argued that the canonical version was a later revision which de-emphasized the Gnostic aspects. Price wrote that, The historical Jesus problem replicates itself in the case of Paul and that the epistles have the same limitations as the Gospels as historical evidence. Price sees the epistles as a compilation of fragments possibly with a Gnostic core, and contends that Marcion was responsible for much of the Pauline corpus or even wrote the letters himself, while criticizing the circumstantial ad hominem fallacy of fellow Christ myth theorists holding the mid-first century dating of the epistles e.g. Galatians as conventionally dated c. AD 53 for their own apologetical reasons. Price argues that passages such as Galatians chapter 1 verses 18 to 20, Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 to 11 are late Catholic interpolations and that 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 14 to 16 was unlikely to have been written by a Jewish person. Topic: <laughs> Lack of biographical information. Topic: <laughs> Mainstream view. Modern biblical scholarship notes that, "...Paul has relatively little to say on the biographical information of Jesus." Viewing Jesus as, "...a recent contemporary," bishop and historian Paul Barnett explains that, Paul's relative lack of detailed reference to the historical Christ is usually explained in one of two ways, either Paul knew only that there was such a man but knew or cared to know little more Boltman, or he knew quite a lot but didn't need to elaborate this in his letters beyond what his readers already knew. <laughs> Mythicist views Wells criticized the infrequency of the reference to Jesus in the Pauline letters and has said there is no information in them about Jesus' parents, place of birth, teachings, trial nor crucifixion. Robert Price says that Paul does not refer to Jesus' earthly life, also not when that life might have provided convenient examples and justifications for Paul's teachings. Instead, Revelation seems to have been a prominent source for Paul's knowledge about Jesus. Wells says that the Pauline epistles do not make reference to Jesus' sayings, or only in a vague and general sense. According to Wells, as referred to by Price in his own words, the writers of the New Testament must surely have cited them when the same subjects came up in the situations they addressed. Topic: <laughs> Brother of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5 and Galatians chapter 1 verse 19 make reference to the brothers of the Lord and 
James, the brother of the Lord, respectively. Per Galatians chapter 1 verse 19, mainstream scholarship holds that it attests that Paul met with James, brother of Jesus. Mythicists argue that 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5 and Galatians chapter 1 verse 19 are references to a fraternal brotherhood, or that brother of the Lord connotes a meaning other than a male sibling of Jesus. Topic: <laughs> Jesus birth Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and Romans chapter 1 verse 3 make reference to Jesus' birth, being born ancient Greek, genomenon translate, genomenon, lit, made of a woman, and born ancient Greek, genomenu translate, genomenu, lit, was made of the seed of David, respectively. Mainstream scholarship holds that Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 attests that Paul knew Jesus was born of a human mother and that per Romans chapter 1 verse 3, Paul says that Jesus was born a descendant of David. A historical ancestor in Paul's view, Doherty and Carrier hold that Paul's unique usage of the term made in the context of these references is consistent with a celestial Jesus who was born, incarnated when a human body was made for him. Wells contends that Paul's reference to Davidic descent is surely to state an article of faith and not an assertion of historical fact. Topic: <laughs> Eucharist. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26 make reference to the night Jesus handled bread and wine, teaching Christians the theological ritual of the Lord's Supper. Mainstream scholarship holds that it recalls the earthly life of Jesus, in the context of cultic rites that assumed his divinity. Mythicists argue that Paul's vision of Jesus inaugurating the Eucharist ritual is an etiological myth. Celestial being Mainstream view most scholars view the Pauline letters as essential elements in the study of the historical Jesus, and the development of early Christianity. New Testament scholar James Dunn states that in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 Paul "...recites the foundational belief," namely, that Christ died. According to Dunn, "...Paul was told about a Jesus who had died two years earlier or so." 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 11 also refers to others before Paul who preached the creed. The Pauline letters incorporate creeds or confessions of faith that predate Paul and give essential information on the faith of the early Jerusalem community around James, the brother of Jesus. The Pauline epistles contain elements of a Christ myth and its cultus, such as the Christ hymn of Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 to 11, which portray Jesus as an incarnated and subsequently exalted heavenly being. These pre-Pauline creeds date to within a few years of Jesus' death and developed within the Christian community in Jerusalem. Scholars view these as indications that the incarnation and exaltation of Jesus was part of Christian tradition a few years after his death and over a decade before the writing of the Pauline epistles, yet, the development of the early Christian views on Jesus' divinity is a matter of debate within contemporary scholarship. According to a long-standing consensus, the oldest Christology was an exaltation Christology, according to which Jesus was subsequently raised to divine status. Quote, this exaltation Christology may have developed over time, as witnessed in the Gospels, with the earliest Christians believing that Jesus became divine when he was resurrected. Later beliefs shifted the exaltation to his baptism, birth, and subsequently to the idea of his eternal existence, as witnessed in the Gospel of John. This high Christology is the view that Jesus was a pre-existent divine being who became a human, did the Father's will on earth, and then was taken back up into heaven whence he had originally come. Yet, as Ehrman notes, this subsequent incarnation Christology was also preached by Paul, and even predates him. According to the early High Christology Club, this incarnation Christology or High Christology did not evolve over a longer time, but was a big bang which arose in the first few decades of the church, as witnessed in the writings of Paul. Scholars have also argued that Paul was a mythmaker who gave his own divergent interpretation of the meaning of Jesus, building a bridge between the Jewish and Hellenistic world, thereby creating the faith that became Christianity. Topic mythicist views Christ myth theorists generally reject the idea that Paul's epistles refer to a real person. According to Doherty, the Jesus of Paul was a divine son of God, existing in a spiritual realm where he was crucified and resurrected. 
This mythological Jesus was based on exegesis of the Old Testament and mystical visions of a risen Jesus. Carrier argues that Paul is actually writing about a celestial deity named Jesus. Carrier notes that there is little, if any, concrete information about Christ's earthly life in the Pauline epistles, even though Jesus is mentioned over 300 times. According to Carrier, the genuine Pauline epistles show that the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul believed in a visionary or dream Jesus, based on a pesher of Septuagint verses Zechariah chapter 6 and 3, Daniel 9 and Isaiah chapters 52-53. Carrier further argues that according to Paul Philippians 2.7, Christ came in the likeness of men and was found in a form like a man and in Ram, 8.3, that he was only sent in the likeness of sinful flesh and homoyumati sarkos hamartias. This is a doctrine of a pre-existent being assuming a human body, but not being fully transformed into a man, just looking like one. The non-Pauline epistle to the Hebrews is also relevant per Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, in the days of his flesh Jesus cried and prayed to God to save him. Mythicists generally contend that this verse is anomalous with supposed traditions underlying the Synoptic Gospels, however Doherty and Carrier additionally hold that the phrase in the days of his flesh is consistent with a celestial Jesus. Topic. Jesus lived in a dim past. Topic. Mythicist views The early Wells, and Ilvar Eligard, have argued that Paul's Jesus may have lived far earlier, in a dimly remembered remote past. Wells argues that Paul and the other epistle writers the earliest Christian writers do not provide any support for the idea that Jesus lived early in the first century and that for Paul Jesus may have existed many decades, if not centuries, before. According to Wells, the earliest strata of the New Testament literature presented Jesus as a basically supernatural personage only obscurely on earth as a man at some unspecified period in the past. In the Jesus myth, Wells argues that two Jesus narratives fused into one, Paul's mythical Jesus and a minimally historical Jesus whose teachings were preserved in the Q document, a hypothetical common source for the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Some myth proponents assert that the writings of Epiphanius of Salamis makes reference to a group of Jewish Christians who held that Jesus lived during the reign of Alexander Janius, placing Jesus about 100 BCE and that this was also the view presented in the Jewish writings about Jesus in the Talmud and the Toledo Yeshu. According to the Panarion by Epiphanius, the Jewish Christian sect known as the Nazarenes began as Jewish converts of the Apostles. Richard Carrier contends that Epiphanius, in Panarion 29, says there was a sect of still Torah-observant Christians who taught that Jesus lived and died in the time of Janius, and all the Jewish sources on Christianity that we have from the Talmud to the Toledo Yeshu report no other view than that Jesus lived during the time of Janius. Topic. Mainstream criticism Theologian Gregory A. Boyd and Paul Rhodes Eddy, professor of Biblical and Theological Studies at Bethel University, criticize the idea that, "...Paul viewed Jesus as a cosmic savior who lived in the past," referring to various passages in the Pauline epistles which seem to contradict this idea. In Galatians 1 verse 19, Paul says he met with James, the "...Lord's brother." 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 to 8 refers to people to whom Jesus had appeared and who were Paul's contemporaries and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 14 to 16 Paul refers to the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and drove out us as the same people indicating that the death of Jesus was within the same time frame as the persecution of Paul Boyd and Eddy doubt that Paul viewed Jesus similar to the savior deities found in ancient mystery religions Topic. The Gospels are not historical records. Topic. Dating and authorship The general consensus of modern scholars is that Mark was the first Gospel to be written and dates from no earlier than c. AD 65, while Matthew and Luke, which use it as a source, were written between AD 80 and 85. The composition history of John is complex, but most scholars see it taking place in stages beginning as early as before AD 70 and extending as late as the end of the century. None of the authors were eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus. 
T. He common wisdom in the Academy is that stories and sayings of Jesus circulated for decades, undergoing countless retellings and embellishments before being finally set down in writing. According to scholar in theology Richard Baucom, the authors may have received their information very close to eyewitness reports. According to Carrier, the Gospels cannot really be dated, nor are the real authors known. Their names were assigned early, but not early enough for us to be confident they were accurately known. It is based on speculation that Mark was the first, written between AD 60 and 70, Matthew second, between AD 70 and 80, Luke and Acts third, between AD 80 and 90, and John last, between AD 90 and 100. Topic: <laughs> Genre. According to Richard Borage, priest and biblical scholar, any study of the Gospels must first determine the genre under which they fall, in order to interpret them correctly, since genre is a key convention guiding both the composition and the interpretation of writings. The Gospels' authors may have intended to write novels, myths, histories, or biographies, which are different genres and have a tremendous impact on how they ought to be interpreted. Among contemporary scholars, there is consensus that the Gospels are a type of ancient biography, though theologian Rudolf Bultmann notes that the Gospel authors had no interest in history or in a historical Jesus. Michael Vines, professor of religious studies at Lees McRae College, notes that the Gospel of Mark may have aspects similar to a Jewish novel. Some scholars have argued that the Gospels are symbolical representations of the Torah, which were written in response to the Roman occupation and the suppression of Jewish religiosity. According to Paul Eddy and Gregory Boyd, mythicists argue that in the Gospels, a fictitious historical narrative was imposed on the mythical cosmic savior figure. Created by Paul, Robert Price notes support for the view that the Gospels are a fictional composition, arguing that the Gospels are a type of legendary fiction and that the story of Jesus portrayed in the Gospels fits the mythic hero archetype. Some myth proponents suggest that some parts of the New Testament were meant to appeal to Gentiles as familiar allegories rather than history. According to Richard Carrier, the Gospels are essentially allegory and fiction. Topic. Hebrew Bible parallels Arguments drawing comparisons between the New and Old Testaments have traditionally been made by Christian theologians in defense of their teachings, but without doubting a historical Jesus, some myth proponents note that some stories in the New Testament seem to try to reinforce Old Testament prophecies and repeat stories about figures like Elijah, Elisha, Moses and Joshua in order to appeal to Jewish converts. Price notes that almost all the Gospel stories have parallels in Old Testamentical and other traditions, concluding that the Gospels are no independent sources for a historical Jesus, but "...legend and myth, fiction and redaction." <laughs> Greek influences In Christ and the Caesars 1877, philosopher Bruno Bauer suggested that Christianity was a synthesis of the Stoicism of Seneca the Younger, Greek Neoplatonism, and the Jewish theology of Philo as developed by pro-Roman Jews such as Josephus. This new religion was in need of a founder and created its Christ. In a review of Bauer's work, Robert Price notes that Bauer's basic stance regarding the Stoic tone and the fictional nature of the Gospels are still repeated in contemporary scholarship. Topic. Weaving together various traditions According to Wells, a minimally historical Jesus existed, whose teachings were preserved in the Q document. According to Wells, the Gospels weave together two Jesus narratives, namely Paul's mythical Jesus and the Galilean preacher of the Q document. Doherty disagrees with Wells regarding this teacher of the Q document, arguing that he was an allegorical character who personified wisdom and came to be regarded as the founder of the Q community. According to Doherty, Q's Jesus and Paul's Christ were combined in the Gospel of Mark by a predominantly Gentile community. Topic: No independent eyewitness accounts. Topic: Lack of surviving historic records. Mainstream biblical scholars point out that much of the writings of antiquity have been lost and that there was little written about any Jew or Christian in this period. Ehrman points out that we do not have archaeological or textual evidence for the existence of most people in the ancient world, even famous people like Pontius Pilate, whom the myth theorists agree to have existed. 
Robert Hutchinson notes that this is also true of Josephus, despite the fact that he was a personal favorite of the Roman Emperor Vespasian. Hutchinson quotes Ehrman, who notes that Josephus is never mentioned in first century Greek and Roman sources, despite being a personal friend of the emperor. According to classical historian and popular author Michael Grant, if the same criterion is applied to others, we can reject the existence of a mass of pagan personages whose reality as historical figures is never questioned. Myth proponents claim there is significance in the lack of surviving historic records about Jesus of Nazareth from any non-Jewish author until the second century, adding that Jesus left no writings or other archaeological evidence. Using the argument from silence, they note that Jewish philosopher Philo of Alexandria did not mention Jesus when he wrote about the cruelty of Pontius Pilate around 40 AD. Topic. Josephus and Tacitus There are three non-Christian sources which are typically used to study and establish the historicity of Jesus. Two mentions in Josephus and one mention in the Roman source Tacitus. According to John Dominic Crossan, that Jesus was crucified is as sure as anything historical can ever be, since both Josephus and Tacitus agree with the Christian accounts on at least that basic fact. Topic. Josephus Josephus' Antiquities of the Jews, written around 93-94 AD, includes two references to the biblical Jesus in books 18 and 20. The general scholarly view is that while the longer passage in Book 18, known as the Testimonium Flavianum, is most likely not authentic in its entirety, it is broadly agreed upon that it originally consisted of an authentic nucleus, which was then subject to Christian interpolation or forgery. Myth proponents also argue that the Testimonium Flavianum may have been a partial interpolation or forgery by Christian apologist Eusebius in the 4th century or by others. The other mention in Josephus is as follows. Not the brother of Jesus, who was called Christ, whose name was James. According to Josephus scholar Louis H. Feldman, few have doubted the genuineness of Josephus' reference to Jesus in Antiquities 20, 9, 1 and it is only disputed by a small number of scholars, Paul Eddy and Gregory Boyd, who are critical of Christ myth theorists, note that Josephus mentions 21 other people with the name Jesus, and argue that when Josephus called James the brother of Jesus, called Christ. In the Antiquities, he did so to distinguish him from the other persons named Jesus he had already mentioned. Richard Carrier disagrees, proposing that the original text referred to a brother of the high priest Jesus son of Damnius, named James, who is mentioned in the same narrative, in which James the brother of Jesus is executed by Ananus ben Ananus. Carrier further argues that the words, the one called Christ, likely resulted from the accidental insertion of a marginal note added by some unknown reader. Others speculate that he was referring to a mythic Christ that had already been historicized, or to fraternal brotherhood rather than a literal sibling. This is dismissed by some in mainstream academia on the grounds that there is no evidence of a supposed Jerusalem brotherhood. Topic Tacitus Roman historian Tacitus referred to Christus and his execution by Pontius Pilate in his Annals written c. AD 116, Book 15, Chapter 44, a class hated for their abominations, called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilatus. The very negative tone of Tacitus's comments on Christians make most experts believe that the passage is extremely unlikely to have been forged by a Christian scribe. The Tacitus reference is now widely accepted as an independent confirmation of Christ's crucifixion, although some scholars question the historical value of the passage on various grounds. Christ myth theory supporters such as G. A. Wells and Carrier contend that sources such as Tacitus and others, which were written decades after the supposed events, include no independent traditions that relate to Jesus, and hence can provide no confirmation of historical facts about him. Topic Other sources in Jesus outside the New Testament 2000, mainstream scholar Van Voorst considers references to Jesus in classical writings, Jewish writings, hypothetical sources of the canonical Gospels, and extant Christian writings outside the New Testament. 
Van Voorst concludes that non-Christian sources provide a small but certain corroboration of certain New Testament historical traditions on the family background, time of life, ministry, and death of Jesus, as well as evidence of the content of Christian preaching that is independent of the New Testament, while extra-biblical Christian sources give access to some important information about the earliest traditions on Jesus. However, New Testament sources remain central for both the main lines and the details about Jesus' life and teaching. Topic diversity and parallels Topic Early Christian diversity points to multiple roots Early Christianity was wildly diverse, with proto-Orthodoxy and heretical views like Gnosticism alongside each other. According to Mack, various Jesus movements existed, whose ideas converged in an early proto-Orthodoxy. According to Doherty, the rapid growth of early Christian communities and the great variety of ideas cannot be explained by a single missionary effort, but points to parallel developments, which arose at various places and competed for support. Paul's arguments against rival apostles also point to this diversity. Doherty further notes that Yeshua Jesus is a generic name, meaning, Yahweh saves and refers to the concept of divine salvation, which could apply to any kind of saving entity or wisdom. Topic. Parallels with other religions Doherty notes that, with the conquests of Alexander the Great, the Greek culture and language spread throughout the eastern Mediterranean world, influencing the already existing cultures there. The Roman conquest of this area added to the cultural diversity, but also to a sense of alienation and pessimism. A rich diversity of religious and philosophical ideas was available and Judaism was held in high regard by non-Jews for its monotheistic ideas and its high moral standards. Yet monotheism was also offered by Greek philosophy, especially Platonism, with its high god and the intermediary logos. According to Doherty, out of this rich soil of ideas arose Christianity, a product of both Jewish and Greek philosophy." Echoing Bruno Bauer, who argued that Christianity was a synthesis of Stoicism, Greek Neoplatonism and Jewish thought. <laughs> Jewish belief in a celestial angel called Jesus Mainstream scholars have noted the extent and significance of Jewish belief in a chief angel acting as a heavenly mediator during the Second Temple period, as well as the similarities between Jesus and this chief celestial angel. Ehrman has even gone so far as to argue that Paul regarded Jesus to be an angel, who was incarnated on earth. According to Carrier, originally, Jesus was the name of a celestial being, subordinate to God. According to Carrier, this Jesus would most likely have been the same archangel identified by Philo of Alexandria as already extant in Jewish theology. Philo knew this figure by all of the attributes Paul already knew Jesus by, the firstborn son of God Epistle to the Romans chapter 8 verse 29, the celestial image of God second epistle to the Corinthians 4 to 4 and God's agent of creation first epistle to the Corinthians 8 to 6. He was also God's celestial high priest Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17, 4 14, etc. and God's logos. Philo says this being was identified as the figure named Jesus in the book of Zechariah. Topic. Personification of logos and wisdom Separately from mythicism, scholar of ancient religious studies Peter Schaeffer contends that Philo's logos was likely derived from his understanding of the post-biblical wisdom literature, in particular the wisdom of Solomon." Professor of New Testament at Loyola University Urban C. von Wald notes that the wisdom literature and the philosophical writings of Philo may furnish the background to the logos of the Johannan prologue. According to mythicist, Christianity originated from a Jewish sect in a milieu where some Jews practiced a form of proto-Gnosticism, seeking salvation by revealed Gnosis, via a mediator between God and humans, i.e. an intermediary variously known as one like a son of man, the divine logos, etc. From the cultus of Paul, a divergent form of this salvation theology was later promoted for non-Jews. According to Doherty, a somewhat similar idea to the Greek logos was found in Judaism, where wisdom, a personified part of God, brought knowledge of God and the law. Similar ideas were also developed in other cultures and religions. According to Wells, the historical Jesus was derived from this wisdom traditions, the personification of an eternal aspect of God, who came to visit human beings. 
Doherty notes that the concept of a spiritual Christ was the result of common philosophical and religious ideas of the 1st and 2nd century AD, in which the idea of an intermediary force between God and the world were common. Doherty further notes that divine inspiration was a common concept. Topic: <laughs> Jewish Hellenistic mystery cult. According to Doherty, the Christ of Paul shares similarities with the Greco-Roman mystery cults. Authors Timothy Freak and Peter Gandy explicitly argue that Jesus was a deity, akin to the mystery cults, while Dorothy Murdoch argues that the Christ myth draws heavily on the Egyptian story of Osiris and Horus. According to Robert Price, the story of Jesus portrayed in the Gospels is akin to the mythic hero archetype. The mythic hero archetype is present in many cultures who often have miraculous conceptions or virgin births heralded by wise men and marked by a star, are tempted by or fight evil forces, die on a hill, appear after death and then ascend to heaven. According to Carrier, early Christianity was but one of several mystery cults which developed out of Hellenistic influences on local cults and religions. Mainstream scholarship disagrees with this interpretation. Many mainstream biblical scholars respond that most of these parallels are either coincidences or without historical basis and or that these parallels do not prove that a Jesus figure did not live. Christian theologians have cited the mythic hero archetype as a defense of Christian teaching while completely affirming a historical Jesus. Secular academics have also pointed out that the teachings of Jesus marked a radical departure from all the conventions by which heroes had been defined. Topic: 18th and 19th century proponents. According to Van Voorst, the argument that Jesus never existed, but was invented by the Christian movement around the year 100, goes back to Enlightenment times, when the historical critical study of the past was born, and may have originated with Lord Bolingbroke, an English deist. According to Weaver and Schneider, the beginnings of the formal denial of the existence of Jesus can be traced to late 18th century France with the works of Constantine Francois Chassebuff de Volney and Charles Francois Dupuis. Volney and Dupuis argued that Christianity was an amalgamation of various ancient mythologies and that Jesus was a totally mythical character. Dupuis argued that ancient rituals in Syria, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Persia, and India had influenced the Christian story which was allegorized as the histories of solar deities, such as Saul Invictus. Dupuis also said that the resurrection of Jesus was an allegory for the growth of the sun's strength in the sign of Aries at the spring equinox. Volney argued that Abraham and Sarah were derived from Brahma and his wife Saraswati, whereas Christ was related to Krishna. Volney made use of a draft version of Dupuis' work and at times differed from him, e.g. in arguing that the gospel stories were not intentionally created, but were compiled organically. Volney's perspective became associated with the ideas of the French Revolution, which hindered the acceptance of these views in England. Despite this, his work gathered significant following among British and American radical thinkers during the 19th century. In 1835, German theologian David Friedrich Strauss published his extremely controversial The Life of Jesus, critically examined Das Leben Jesu. While not denying that Jesus existed, he did argue that the miracles in the New Testament were mythical retellings of normal events as supernatural happenings. According to Strauss, the early church developed these miracle stories to present Jesus as a fulfillment of Jewish prophecies of what the Messiah would be like. This rationalist perspective was in direct opposition to the supernaturalist view that the Bible was accurate both historically and spiritually. The book caused an uproar across Europe, as Anthony Ashley Cooper, 7th Earl of Shaftesbury called it, "...the most pestilential book ever vomited out of the jaws of hell." And Strauss' appointment as chair of theology at the University of Zurich caused such controversy that the authorities offered him a pension before he had a chance to start his duties. German Bruno Bauer, who taught at the University of Bonn, took Strauss' arguments further and became the first author to systematically argue that Jesus did not exist. Beginning in 1841 with his criticism of the gospel history of the synoptics, Bauer argued that Jesus was primarily a literary figure, but left open the question of whether a historical Jesus existed at all. Then in his criticism of the Pauline Epistles 1852 and in A Critique of the Gospels and a History of Their Origin 1851 Bauer argued that Jesus had not existed. 
Bauer's work was heavily criticized at the time, as in 1839 he was removed from his position at the University of Bonn and his work did not have much impact on future myth theorists. In his two volume, 867 page book Anacalypsis, English gentleman Godfrey Higgins said that. The mythos of the Hindus, the mythos of the Jews and the mythos of the Greeks are all at bottom the same, and are contrivances under the appearance of histories to perpetuate doctrines," and that Christian editors either from roguery or folly, corrupted them all. In his 1875 book The World's Sixteen Crucified Saviors, American Kersey Graves said that many demigods from different countries shared similar stories, traits or quotes as Jesus and he used Higgins as the main source for his arguments. The validity of the claims in the book have been greatly criticized by Christ myth proponents like Richard Carrier and largely dismissed by biblical scholars. Starting in the 1870s, English poet and author Gerald Massey became interested in Egyptology and reportedly taught himself Egyptian hieroglyphics at the British Museum. In 1883, Massey published The Natural Genesis, where he asserted parallels between Jesus and the Egyptian god Horus. His other major work, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, was published shortly before his death in 1907. His assertions have influenced various later writers such as Alvin Boyd Kuhn and Tom Harper. Despite criticisms from Stanley Porter and Ward Gask, Massey's theories regarding Egyptian etymologies for certain scriptures are supported by noted contemporary Egyptologists. In the 1870s and 1880s, a group of scholars associated with the University of Amsterdam, known in German scholarship as the Radical Dutch School, rejected the authenticity of the Pauline epistles and took a generally negative view of the Bible's historical value. Abraham Dirk Lohmann argued in 1881 that all New Testament writings belonged to the 2nd century and doubted that Jesus was a historical figure, but later said the core of the Gospels was genuine. Additional early Christ myth proponents included Swiss skeptic Rudolf Steck, English historian Edwin Johnson, English radical Reverend Robert Taylor, and his associate Richard Carlyle. <laughs> early 20th century proponents During the early 20th century, several writers published arguments against Jesus' historicity, often drawing on the work of liberal theologians, who tended to deny any value to sources for Jesus outside the New Testament and limited their attention to Mark and the hypothetical Q source. They also made use of the growing field of religious history which found sources for Christian ideas in Greek and Oriental mystery cults, rather than Judaism. Joseph Klausner wrote that biblical scholars tried their hardest to find in the historic Jesus something which is not Judaism, but in his actual history they have found nothing of this whatever, since this history is reduced almost to zero. It is therefore no wonder that at the beginning of this century there has been a revival of the 18th and 19th century view that Jesus never existed. The work of social anthropologist Sir James George Fraser has had an influence on various myth theorists, although Fraser himself believed that Jesus existed. In 1890, Fraser published the first edition of The Golden Bough which attempted to define the shared elements of religious belief. This work became the basis of many later authors who argued that the story of Jesus was a fiction created by Christians. After a number of people claimed that he was a myth theorist, in the 1913 expanded edition of The Golden Bough he expressly stated that his theory assumed a historical Jesus. In 1900, Scottish Member of Parliament John MacKinnon Robertson argued that Jesus never existed, but was an invention by a first century messianic cult. In Robertson's view, religious groups invent new gods to fit the needs of the society of the time. Robertson argued that a solar deity symbolized by the lamb and the ram had long been worshipped by an Israelite cult of Joshua and that this cult had then invented a new messianic figure, Jesus of Nazareth. Robertson argued that a possible source for the Christian myth may have been the Talmudic story of the executed Jesus Pandura which dates to 100 BC. Robertson considered the letters of Paul the earliest surviving Christian writings, but viewed them as primarily concerned with theology and morality, rather than historical details. Robertson viewed references to the Twelve Apostles and the institution of the Eucharist as stories that must have developed later among Gentile believers who were converted by Jewish evangelists like Paul. The English schoolmaster George Robert Stowe Mead argued in 1903 that Jesus had existed, but that he had lived in 100 BC. Mead based his argument on the Talmud, which pointed to Jesus being crucified c. 100 BC. In Mead's view, this would mean that the Christian Gospels are mythical. 
Tom Harper has compared Mead's impact on myth theory to that of Bruno Bauer and Arthur Drews. In 1909, school teacher John Eliezer Remsburg published The Christ, which made a distinction between a possible historical Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, and the Jesus of the Gospels, Jesus of Bethlehem. Remsburg thought that there was good reason to believe that the historical Jesus existed, but that the Christ of Christianity was a mythological creation. Remsburg compiled a list of 42 names of writers who lived and wrote during the time, or within a century after the time, who Remsburg felt should have written about Jesus if the Gospel's account was reasonably accurate, but who did not. Also in 1909, German philosophy professor Christian Heinrich Arthur Drews wrote The Christ Myth to argue that Christianity had been a Jewish Gnostic cult that spread by appropriating aspects of Greek philosophy and life-death rebirth deities. In his later books The Witnesses to the Historicity of Jesus 1912 and The Denial of the Historicity of Jesus in Past and Present 1926, Drews reviewed the biblical scholarship of his time as well as the work of other myth theorists, attempting to show that everything reported about the historical Jesus had a mythical character. Also see Wood, Herbert George, Christianity and the Nature of History. Cambridge University Press, 1934, p. XXXII. Arthur Drews, Die Christusmyth. Eugen Diederichs, 1910, published in English as The Christ Myth, Prometheus, 1910, p. 410. Drews met with criticism from Nikolai Berdyaev who claimed that Drews was an anti-Semite who argued against the historical existence of Jesus for the sake of Arianism. Drews took part in a series of public debates with theologians and historians who opposed his arguments. Drews' work found fertile soil in the Soviet Union, where Marxist Leninist atheism was the official doctrine of the state. Soviet leader Lenin argued that it was imperative in the struggle against religious obscurantists to form a union with people like Drews. Several editions of Drews' The Christ Myth were published in the Soviet Union from the early 1920s onwards and his arguments were included in school and university textbooks. Public meetings asking, Did Christ Live?, were organized, during which party operatives debated with clergymen. In 1927, British philosopher Bertrand Russell stated in his lecture Why I Am Not a Christian that, historically it is quite doubtful that Jesus existed, and if he did we do not know anything about him, so that I am not concerned with the historical question, which is a very difficult one, though Russell did nothing to further develop the idea. Church of Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard was convinced that Jesus never existed, stating that Christianity evolved from the R6 implant, the man on the cross. There was no Christ. The Roman Catholic Church, through watching the dramatizations of people picked up some little fragments of R6. Topic Modern proponents Topic Paul Louis Couchard The French philosopher Paul Louis Couchard, published in the 1920s and 1930s, but was a predecessor for contemporary mythicist. According to Kushad, Christianity started not with a biography of Jesus but a collective mystical experience, sustaining a divine history mystically revealed. Kushad's Jesus is not a myth, but a religious conception. Robert Price mentions Kouchoud's comment on the Christ hymn, one of the relics of the Christ cults to which Paul converted. Kushad noted that in this hymn the name Jesus was given to the Christ after his tortuous death, implying that there cannot have been a ministry by a teacher called Jesus. Topic George Albert Wells George Albert Wells 1926 a professor of German, revived the interest in the Christ myth theory. In his early work, including Did Jesus Exist, 1975, Wells argued that because the Gospels were written decades after Jesus's death by Christians who were theologically motivated but had no personal knowledge of him, a rational person should believe the Gospels only if they are independently confirmed. Wells was featured in the controversial UK television program series, Jesus, The Evidence Channel 4 to 1984, which caused a furore, being Channel 4's first major religious program commission, atheist philosopher and scholar Michael Martin supported his thesis, claiming, Jesus is not placed in a historical context and the biographical details of his life are left unsuspect, a strong prima facie case challenging the historicity of Jesus can be constructed. Martin adds in his book The Case Against Christianity that Wells' argument against the historicity of Jesus is sound. Later, Wells concluded that a historical Jesus figure did exist and was a Galilean preacher, whose teachings were preserved in the Q document, a hypothetical common source for the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. However, he continued to insist that biblical Jesus did not exist and argued that stories such as the virgin birth, the crucifixion around AD 30 under Pilate and the resurrection should be regarded as legendary. 
Biblical scholar Robert E. Van Voorst said that with this argument Wells had performed an about face. However, other scholars continue to note Wells as a mythicist. In his 2009 book Cutting Jesus Down to Size, Wells clarified that he believes the Gospels represent the fusion of two originally independent streams a Galilean preaching tradition and the supernatural personage of Paul's early epistles, but he says that both figures owe much of their substance to ideas from the Jewish wisdom literature. In 2000, Van Voorst gave an overview of proponents of the non existence hypothesis and their arguments, and eight arguments against this hypothesis is put forward by Wells and his predecessors. The argument of silence is to be rejected, because it is wrong to suppose that what is unmentioned or undetailed did not exist. Van Voorst further argues that the early Christian literature was not written for historical purposes. Dating the invention of Jesus around 100 CE is too late, Mark was written earlier, and contains abundant historical details which are correct. The argument that the development of the Gospel traditions shows that there was no historical Jesus is incorrect. Development does not prove wholesale invention, and difficulties do not prove invention. Wells cannot explain why. No pagans and Jews who opposed Christianity denied Jesus' historicity or even questioned it. The rejection of Tacitus and Josephus ignores the scholarly consensus. Proponents of the non-existence hypothesis are not driven by scholarly interests, but by anti-Christian sentiments. Wells and others do not offer alternative, other, credible hypotheses for the origins of Christianity. Wells himself accepted the existence of a minimal historical Jesus, thereby effectively leaving the non-existence hypothesis. According to Graham Stanton, writing in 2002, Wells advanced the most sophisticated version of the Christ myth theory, noting that T his intriguing theory rests on several pillars, each of which is shaky. According to Maurice Casey, Wells' work repeated the main points of the religion Geschichtliche Schule, which are deemed outdated by mainstream scholarship. His works were not discussed by New Testament scholars, because it was not considered to be original, and all his main points were thought to have been refuted long time ago, for reasons which were very well known. <inaudible> Earl Doherty Canadian writer Earl Doherty born 1941, was introduced to the Christ myth theme by a lecture by Wells in the 1970s. Doherty follows the lead of Wells, but disagrees on the historicity of Jesus, arguing that everything in Paul points to a belief in an entirely divine son who lived and acted in the spiritual realm, in the same mythical setting in which all the other savior deities of the day were seen to operate. According to Doherty, Paul's Christ originated as a myth derived from Middle Platonism with some influence from Jewish mysticism and belief in a historical Jesus emerged only among Christian communities in the 2nd century. Paul and other writers of the earliest existing proto Christian documents did not believe in Jesus as a person who was incarnated on earth in a historical setting, rather, they believed in Jesus as a heavenly being who suffered his sacrificial death in the lower spheres of heaven, where he was crucified by demons and then was subsequently resurrected by God. This mythological Jesus was not based on a historical Jesus, but rather on an exegesis of the Old Testament in the context of Jewish Hellenistic religious syncretism and what the early authors believed to be mystical visions of a risen Jesus. Doherty agrees with Baucom that the earliest Christology was already a high Christology. That is, Jesus was an incarnation of the pre-existent Christ, but deems it hardly credible that such a belief could develop in such a short time among Jews. Therefore, Doherty concludes that Christianity started with the myth of this incarnated Christ, who was subsequently historicized. According to Doherty, the nucleus of this historicized Jesus of the Gospels can be found in the Jesus movement which wrote the Q source. According to Doherty, the Q authors may have regarded themselves as spokespersons for the wisdom of God, with Jesus being the embodiment of this wisdom, who was added in the latest phase of the development of QQ then started to take the form of a foundation document," in response to a concurring sect who saw John the Baptist as its founder. Eventually, Q's Jesus and Paul's Christ were combined in the Gospel of Mark by a predominantly Gentile community. 
In time, the gospel narrative of this embodiment of wisdom became interpreted as the literal history of the life of Jesus. New Testament scholar Bart Ehrman quotes Doherty from the Jesus Puzzle as maintaining that it was Paul's view that Jesus' death took place in the spiritual, not the earthly realm, but according to Ehrman, not only is there no evidence to support Doherty's assertion of what Paul's view of Jesus was, but there are also a host of reasons for calling Doherty's view into serious question. In a book criticizing the Christ myth theory, New Testament scholar Maurice Casey describes Doherty as perhaps the most influential of all the mythicists, but one who is unable to understand the ancient texts he uses in his arguments. Topic: <laughs> Robert M. Price. American New Testament scholar and former Baptist pastor Robert M. Price born 1954 was a fellow of the Jesus Seminar, a group of writers and scholars who study the historicity of Jesus and who argue that the Christian image of Christ is a theological construct into which traces of Jesus of Nazareth have been woven. He was also a member of the Jesus Project. Price questioned the historicity of Jesus in a series of books, including Deconstructing Jesus 2000, The Incredible Shrinking Son of Man 2003, Jesus is Dead 2007, and The Christ Myth Theory and Its Problems 2011, as well as in Contributions to the Historical Jesus, Five Views 2009, in which he acknowledges that he stands against the majority view of scholars, but cautions against attempting to settle the issue by appeal to the majority. Price notes that Consensus is no criterion for the historicity of Jesus. In Deconstructing Jesus, Price points out that the Jesus Christ of the New Testament is a composite figure, out of which a broad variety of historical Jesuses can be reconstructed, any one of which may have been the real Jesus, but not all of them together. According to Price, various Jesus images flowed together at the origin of Christianity, some of them possibly based on myth, some of them possibly based on a historical Jesus the Nazarene. Price admits uncertainty in this regard, writing in conclusion, There may have been a real figure there, but there is simply no longer any way of being sure. According to Price, the accounts of Jesus are derived from Jewish writings, which show Greek influences and similarities with pagan savior deities. Christianity is a historicized synthesis of mainly Egyptian, Jewish, and Greek mythologies. Price maintains that there are three key points for the traditional Christ myth theory. There is no mention of a miracle working Jesus in secular sources. The epistles, written earlier than the Gospels, provide no evidence of a recent historical Jesus and all that can be taken from the epistles, Price argues, is that a Jesus Christ, Son of God, lived in a heavenly realm, there died as a sacrifice for human sin, was raised by God and enthroned in heaven. The Jesus narrative is paralleled in Middle Eastern myths about dying and rising gods. Price names Baal, Osiris, Attis, Adonis and Dumuzi, Tammuz as examples, all of which, he writes, survived into the Hellenistic and Roman periods and thereby influenced early Christianity. Price alleges that Christian apologists have tried to minimize these parallels, citing accounts that have Jesus being crucified under Alexander Janius (83 BC) or in his fifties by Herod Agrippa I under the rule of Claudius (AD 41 to 54). Price argues that these varying dates are the residue of various attempts to anchor an originally mythic or legendary Jesus in more or less recent history. Topic. Thomas L. Thompson Thomas L. Thompson born 1939, professor emeritus of theology at the University of Copenhagen, is a leading biblical minimalist of the Old Testament. According to Thompson, the accounts of Jesus are derived from Jewish writings. In his 2007 book The Messiah Myth, The Near Eastern Roots of Jesus and David, Thompson argues that the biblical accounts of both King David and Jesus of Nazareth are mythical in nature and based on Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Babylonian and Greek and Roman literature. For example, he argues that the resurrection of Jesus is taken directly from the story of the dying and rising God, Dionysus. However, Thompson does not draw a final conclusion on the historicity or ahistoricity of Jesus, but argued that any historical person would be very different from the Christ or Messiah identified in the Gospel of Mark. Thompson co-edited the contributions from a diverse range of scholars in the 2012 book Is This Not the Carpenter? The Question of the Historicity of the Figure of Jesus. Writing in the introduction, The essays collected in this volume have a modest purpose. 
neither establishing the historicity of a historical Jesus nor possessing an adequate warrant for dismissing it, our purpose is to clarify our engagement with critical historical and exegetical methods." In a 2012 online article, Thompson defended his qualifications to address New Testament issues and he rejected the label of «mythicist» and reiterated his position that the issue of Jesus' existence cannot be determined one way or the other. Thompson contends that the present state of New Testament scholarship viz. Bart Ehrman, is such that an established scholar should present his life of Jesus, without considering whether this figure, in fact, lived as a historical person, and that such assumptions, reflect a serious problem regarding the historical quality of scholarship in biblical studies. Topic. Thomas L. Brody In 2012, the Irish Dominican priest and theologian Thomas L. Brody, born 1943, holding a PhD from the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome and a co founder and former director of the Dominican Biblical Institute in Limerick, published Beyond the Quest for the Historical Jesus Memoir of a Discovery. In this book, Brody, who previously had published academic works on the Hebrew prophets, argued that the Gospels are essentially a rewriting of the stories of Elijah and Elisha when viewed as a unified account in the books of Kings. This view led Brody to the conclusion that Jesus is mythical. Brody's argument builds on his previous work, in which he stated that rather than being separate and fragmented, the stories of Elijah and Elisha are united and that 1 Kings chapter 16 verses 29 to 2 Kings chapter 13 verse 25 is a natural extension of 1 Kings chapters 17 to 2 Kings 8 which have a coherence not generally observed by other biblical scholars. Brody then views the Elijah Elisha story as the underlying model for the Gospel narratives. In response to Brody's publication of his view that Jesus was mythical, the Dominican Order banned him from writing and lecturing, although he was allowed to stay on as a brother of the Irish province, which continued to care for him. There is an unjustifiable jump between methodology and conclusion in Brody's book according to Gerard Norton and are not soundly based on scholarship. According to Norton, they are a memoir of a series of significant moments or events in Brody's life that reinforced his core conviction that neither Jesus nor Paul of Tarsus were historical. Topic: <laughs> Richard Carrier. American independent scholar Richard Carrier, born 1969, reviewed Doherty's work on the origination of Jesus and eventually concluded that the evidence actually favored the core Doherty thesis. According to Carrier, following Cushad and Doherty, Christianity started with the belief in a new deity called Jesus, a spiritual, mythical figure. According to Carrier, this new deity was fleshed out in the Gospels, which added a narrative framework and cynic-like teachings, and eventually came to be perceived as a historical biography. According to Carrier, for such a person to be considered the historical Jesus in any pertinent sense, such a person must comply with his definition of a minimal historical Jesus. According to Carrier, many studies by mainstream scholars have shown that the current consensus of a historical Jesus is based on invalid methods. Carrier also claims that historical methodologies often use fallacious reasoning and that they must be drastically revised. Carrier argues in his book on the historicity of Jesus, why we might have reason for doubt that there is insufficient Bayesian probability, that is evidence, to believe in the existence of Jesus. Furthermore, Carrier argues that the Jesus figure was probably originally known only through private revelations and hidden messages in Scripture which were then crafted into a historical figure to communicate the claims of the Gospels allegorically. These allegories then started to be believed as fact during the struggle for control of the Christian churches of the first century. He argues that the probability of Jesus' existence is somewhere in the range from one third to one twelve thousandth, depending on the estimates used for the computation. His methodology was reviewed by Avizer Tucker, a prior advocate of using Bayesian techniques in history. Tucker expressed some sympathy for Carrier's view of the Gospels, stating, the problem with the Synoptic Gospels as evidence for a historical Jesus from a Bayesian perspective is that the evidence that coheres does not seem to be independent, whereas the evidence that is independent does not seem to cohere." However, Tucker argued that historians have been able to use theories about the transmission and preservation of information to identify reliable parts of the Gospels. He said that 
Carrier is too dismissive of such methods because he is focused on hypotheses about the historical Jesus rather than on the best explanations of the evidence. In the peer reviewed scholarly journal for the study of the historical Jesus, Daniel N. Gelada, reviewing Carrier's On the Historicity of Jesus, Why We Might Have Reason for Doubt, says he finds Carrier's arguments problematic and unpersuasive, his use of Bayesian probabilities unnecessarily complex and criticizes Carrier's lack of evidence, strained readings and troublesome assumptions. Gelada also states that there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever, either documentary or archaeological, that there was a period when Christians believed that Jesus only existed in heaven rather than living as a human being on earth, which is Carrier's foundational thesis. Other modern proponents In his books The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross 1970 and The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth 1979, the British archaeologist and philologist John M. Allegro advanced the theory that stories of early Christianity originated in a shamanistic Essene clandestine cult centered around the use of hallucinogenic mushrooms. He also argued that the story of Jesus was based on the crucifixion of the Teacher of Righteousness in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Allegro's theory was criticized sharply by Welsh historian Philip Jenkins, who wrote that Allegro relied on texts that did not exist in quite the form he was citing them. Based on this and many other negative reactions to the book, Allegro's publisher later apologized for issuing the book and Allegro was forced to resign his academic post. Using a reverse translation mechanism, Bernard Duberg's two volume work in French on the New Testament 1987 argued that the Greek text was originally composed in Hebrew instead of Greek, according to the traditional procedures of Midrash. Following Paul Vuglio, Duberg emphasized the importance of gematria in showing the coherence of his back-translated text. He concludes that Paul is as mythical as Jesus. Alvar Eligard, in The Myth of Jesus 1992, and Jesus, 100 Years Before Christ. A study in Creative Mythology 1999, argued that Jesus lived 100 years before the accepted dates, and was a teacher of the Essenes. According to Eligard, Paul was connected with the Essenes, and had a vision of this Jesus. Timothy Freak and Peter Gandhi, in their 1999 publication The Jesus Mysteries, was the original Jesus. A pagan god, proposed that Jesus did not literally exist as an historically identifiable individual, but was instead a syncretic reinterpretation of the fundamental pagan godman by the Gnostics, who were the original sect of Christianity. The book has been negatively received by scholars, and also by Christ mythicist. Influenced by Massey and Higgins, Alvin Boyd Kuhn argued an Egyptian etymology to the Bible that the Gospels were symbolic rather than historic and that church leaders started to misinterpret the New Testament in the 3rd century. Author and ordained priest Tom Harper dedicated his 2004 book The Pagan Christ to Kuhn, suggesting that Kuhn has not received the attention he deserves since many of his works were self-published. Building on Kuhn's work, Harper listed similarities among the stories of Jesus, Horus, Mithras, Buddha and others. According to Harper, in the 2nd or 3rd centuries the early church created the fictional impression of a literal and historic Jesus and then used forgery and violence to cover up the evidence. Harper's book received a great deal of criticism, including a response book, Unmasking the Pagan Christ, an evangelical response to the cosmic Christ idea. Fellow mythicist Robert M. Price also wrote a negative review, saying that he did not agree that the Egyptian parallels were as forceful as Harper thought. In 2007, Harper published a sequel, Water into Wine. David Fitzgerald has self-published several works in defense of the Christ myth theory, including Nailed, Ten Christian Myths That Show Jesus Never Existed at All 2010, and Jesus, Mything in Action, Vols. I-3 2017. In his 2017 book Decadence, French writer and philosopher Michel Onfray argued for the Christ myth theory and based his hypothesis on the fact that, other than in the New Testament, Jesus is barely mentioned in accounts of the period. The Christ myth theory enjoyed brief popularity in the Soviet Union, where it was supported by Sergei Kovalev, Alexander Kozhdin, Abram Ranovich, Nikolai Rumyantsev, and Robert Vipper. However, several scholars, including Kozhdin, later retracted their views about mythical Jesus, and by the end of the 1980s, Iosif Kravelev remained as virtually the only proponent of Christ myth theory in Soviet academia. 
Topic Reception. Topic Popular reception. In a 2015 poll conducted by the Church of England, 40% of respondents indicated that they did not believe Jesus was a real person. Ehrman notes that the mythicists have become loud, and thanks to the internet, they've attracted more attention. Within a few years of the inception of the World Wide Web c. 1990, mythicists such as Earl Doherty began to present their argument to a larger public via the Internet. Doherty created the website The Jesus Puzzle in 1996, while the organization Internet Infidels has featured the works of mythicists on their website and mythicism has been mentioned on several popular news sites. According to Derek Murphy, the documentaries The God Who Wasn't There 2005 and Zeitgeist 2007 raised interest for the Christ myth theory with a larger audience and gave the topic a large coverage on the Internet. Daniel Gelata notes the relationship between the organization, Atheists United and Carrier's work related to mythicism, which has increased the attention of the public. According to Ehrman, mythicism has a growing appeal, because these deniers of Jesus are at the same time denouncers of religion. According to Casey, mythicism has a growing appeal because of an aversion toward Christian fundamentalism among American atheists. Topic. Scholarly reception In modern scholarship, the Christ myth theory is a fringe theory and finds virtually no support from scholars. Topic. Lack of support for mythicism According to New Testament scholar Bart D. Ehrman, most people who study the historical period of Jesus believe that he did exist and do not write in support of the Christ myth theory. Maurice Casey, theologian and scholar of New Testament and early Christianity, stated that the belief among professors that Jesus existed is generally completely certain. According to Casey, the view that Jesus did not exist is the view of extremists, demonstrably false, and Professional scholars generally regard it as having been settled in serious scholarship long ago. In his 1977 book Jesus, an historian's review of the Gospels, classical historian and popular author Michael Grant concluded that, "...modern critical methods fail to support the Christ myth theory." In support of this, Grant quoted Roderick Dunkerley's 1957 opinion that the Christ myth theory has again and again been answered and annihilated by first-rank scholars." At the same time, he also quoted Otto Betz's 1968 opinion that in recent years, "...no serious scholar has ventured to postulate the non-historicity of Jesus—or at any rate very few, and they have not succeeded in disposing of the much stronger, indeed very abundant, evidence to the contrary." In the same book, he also wrote, if we apply to the New Testament, as we should, the same sort of criteria as we should apply to other ancient writings containing historical material, we can no more reject Jesus' existence than we can reject the existence of a mass of pagan personages whose reality as historical figures is never questioned. Graham Clark, Emeritus Professor of Classical Ancient History and Archaeology at Australian National University has stated, Frankly, I know of no ancient historian or biblical historian who would have a twinge of doubt about the existence of a Jesus Christ. The documentary evidence is simply overwhelming. R. Joseph Hoffman, who had created the Jesus Project, which included both mythicists and historicists to investigate the historicity of Jesus, wrote that an adherent to the Christ myth theory asked to set up a separate section of the project for those committed to the theory. Hoffman felt that to be committed to mythicism signaled a lack of necessary skepticism and he noted that most members of the project did not reach the mythicist conclusion. Topic. Questioning the competence of proponents Critics of the Christ myth theory question the competence of its supporters. According to Ehrman, few of these mythicists are actually scholars trained in ancient history, religion, biblical studies or any cognate field, let alone in the ancient languages generally thought to matter for those who want to say something with any degree of authority about a Jewish teacher who allegedly lived in first-century Palestine. In a response, Thompson questioned the polemical nature of this qualification, pointing at his own academic standing and expertise. According to Thompson, Ehrman has attributed to my book arguments and principles which I had never presented, certainly not that Jesus had never existed." 
Thompson questions Ehrman's qualifications in regard to Old Testamentical writings and research, as well as his competence to recognize the problems involved in reiterated narrative and the historicity of a literary figure, stating that Ehrman had thoroughly misunderstood the very issue of the historicity of the New Testament figure of Jesus. Maurice Casey has criticized the mythicist, pointing out their complete ignorance of how modern critical scholarship actually works. He also criticizes mythicists for their frequent assumption that all modern scholars of religion are Protestant fundamentalists of the American variety, insisting that this assumption is not only totally inaccurate, but also exemplary of the mythicist misconceptions about the ideas and attitudes of mainstream scholars. Questioning the mainstream view appears to have consequences for one's job perspectives. According to Casey, Thompson's early work, which successfully refuted the attempts of Albright and others to defend the historicity of the most ancient parts of biblical literature history, has negatively affected his future job prospects. Ehrman also notes that mythicist views would prevent one from getting employment in a religious studies department. These views are so extreme and so unconvincing to 99.99% .99 of the real experts that anyone holding them is as likely to get a teaching job in an established department of religion as a six day creationist is likely to land on in a bona fide department of biology. Topic. Opponents Few scholars have bothered to criticize Christ myth theories. Robert Van Voorst has written contemporary New Testament scholars have typically viewed Christ myth arguments as so weak or bizarre that they relegate them to footnotes, or often ignore them completely. The theory of Jesus' non-existence is now effectively dead as a scholarly question. Paul L. Mayer, former professor of ancient history at Western Michigan University and current professor emeritus in the Department of History there has stated. Anyone who uses the argument that Jesus never existed is simply flaunting his ignorance. Among notable scholars who have directly addressed the Christ myth are Bart Ehrman, Maurice Casey, and Philip Jenkins. Topic: <laughs> Bart Ehrman. In this book, Bart Ehrman surveys the arguments mythicist have made against the existence of Jesus since the idea was first mooted at the end of the 18th century. To the objection that there are no contemporary Roman records of Jesus' existence, Ehrman points out that such records exist for almost no one and there are mentions of Christ in several Roman works of history from only decades after the death of Jesus. The author states that the authentic letters of the Apostle Paul in the New Testament were likely written within a few years of Jesus' death and that Paul likely personally knew James, the brother of Jesus. Although the gospel accounts of Jesus' life may be biased and unreliable in many respects, Ehrman writes, they and the sources behind them which scholars have discerned still contain some accurate historical information. So many independent attestations of Jesus' existence, Ehrman says, are actually astounding for an ancient figure of any kind. Ehrman dismisses the idea that the story of Jesus is an invention based on pagan myths of dying and rising gods, maintaining that the early Christians were primarily influenced by Jewish ideas, not Greek or Roman ones, and repeatedly insisting that the idea that there was never such a person as Jesus is not seriously considered by historians or experts in the field at all. Topic. Maurice Casey in Jesus, Evidence and Argument or Mythicist Myths, 2014, scholar of New Testament and early Christianity Maurice Casey treats the historical method, the reliability of the Gospels, the argument from silence from both the Gospels and the Pauline epistles, and the similarities with other religions of the time. According to Casey, many mythicists seem to object to fundamentalist perceptions of Christianity, while ignoring or being ignorant of liberal forms of Christianity. Topic. Philip Jenkins Philip Jenkins, distinguished professor of history at Baylor University, has written, What you can't do, though, without venturing into the far swamps of extreme crankery, is to argue that Jesus never existed. The Christ myth hypothesis is not scholarship, and is not taken seriously in respectable academic debate. The grounds advanced for the hypothesis are worthless. The authors proposing such opinions might be competent, decent, honest individuals, but the views they present are demonstrably wrong. 
Jesus is better documented and recorded than pretty much any non-elite figure of antiquity. Topic: <laughs> Traditional and Evangelical Christianity. Alexander Lucy Smith, Catholic priest and doctor of moral theology, states that people who think Jesus didn't exist are seriously confused. But also notes that the church needs to reflect on its failure. If 40% believe in the Jesus myth, this is a sign that the Church has failed to communicate with the general public." Stanley E. Porter, President and Dean of McMaster Divinity College in Hamilton, and Stephen J. Bedar, a Baptist minister and graduate of McMaster Divinity, respond to Harper's ideas from an evangelical standpoint in Unmasking the Pagan Christ, an evangelical response to the cosmic Christ idea, challenging the key ideas lying at the foundation of Harper's thesis. Porter and Bedar conclude that there is sufficient evidence for the historicity of Jesus and assert that Harper is motivated to promote universalistic spirituality. Topic documentaries Since 2005, several English language documentaries have focused, at least in part, on the Christ myth theory, The God Who Wasn't There, directed by Brian Fleming and featuring Richard Carrier and Robert M. Price, 2005, The Pagan Christ, produced by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and featuring Tom Harper, 2007, Zeitgeist, the movie directed by Peter Joseph, 2007, The Hidden Story of Jesus, produced by Channel 4 and featuring Robert Beckford, 2007, Religious directed by Larry Charles and featuring Bill Maher 2008 Caesar's Messiah by Joseph at Will 2013 topic see also topic footnotes topic notes topic citation quotes topic references topic sources topic further reading proponents George Albert Wells 1975 did Jesus exist Earl Doherty 1999 the Jesus puzzle republished 2009 as Jesus neither God nor man the case for a mythical Jesus online Robert M price 2003 the incredible shrinking son of man Robert M price 2011 the Christ myth theory and its problems price Robert M 2018 Bart Ehrman interpreted pitchstone publishing Thompson Thomas L Verena Thomas s eds 2012 is this not the carpenter? The question of the historicity of the figure of Jesus. Equinox. ISBN 978-1-84553-986-3. Brody, Thomas L. 2012. Beyond the Quest for the Historical Jesus, Memoir of a Discovery. Sheffield Phoenix Press. ISBN 978-1-9075-3458-4. Richard Carrier, 2014. On the Historicity of Jesus, Why We Might Have Reason for Doubt. Sheffield Phoenix Press. ISBN 978-1-909697-35-5. Scholarly critics von Vorst, Robert E. 2000. Jesus Outside the New Testament, An Introduction to the Ancient Evidence. W. M. B. Eerdmans Publishing. ISBN 978-0-8028-4368-5. Ehrman, Bart D. Did Jesus Exist? The Historical Argument for Jesus of Nazareth. HarperCollins. ISBN 978-0-06-220460-8. Casey, Maurice 2014. Jesus, Evidence and Argument or Mythicist Myths? Bloomsbury T. and T. Clark. ISBN 978-0-5672-9458-6. Topic external links Overview Religious Tolerance General Outline of Range of Views on Jesus from Classical Christian to Jesus a Mere Man and Jesus Entirely Mythical Vridar, Who's WHO, Mythicist and Mythicist Agnostics Demolishing the Historicity of Jesus, a History List of Contemporary and Early Proponents of Christ Myth Theory, Proponents Richard Carrier 2012. So, if Jesus didn't exist, where did he come from then? Evangelic Critics James Patrick Holding 2008, Shattering the Christ Myth did Jesus not exist?